in just a few short weeks, the city of Toledo will do something pretty bold. They'll collectively lose a million pounds. An immense challenge, but it has been done before in multiple cities. And the collective loss has created huge gains in health and happiness. The ripple effect started in 2007, when Oklahoma City showed up in one of the most obese cities in the nation. The mayor challenged the residents to collectively lose a million pounds. And that they did. They created a rallying cry and communicated the message to one and all in very simple terms. The results were remarkable. For example, deaths from strokes reduced by 14%. And just like Oklahoma City, the city of Toledo's Take It Off Toledo initiative is going to take a system-wide approach to help the citizens, the businesses, and everyone else to collectively lose the one million pounds. When you think about it, the urban centers could really be the platforms to solve the world's toughest problems, from health to safety to job creation. Cities could be the units of change to send not just ripples, but to create waves of transformation. Every week, 1.3 million people move into urban areas globally. That's the size of, for example, the city of San Antonio or the city of San Diego. 66% of the world's population will live in urban areas in 2050. This could be a spectacularly good thing or not. Depends on the choices we make. Imagine the pressure on housing, on safety, on water quality, on transportation. How can billions more people fit into the urban areas without diminishing the quality of life or impacting the health of the planet? And can smart cities save us? I believe they can, but only if they are wise. You may have heard that a smart person is aware that tomato is a fruit, but a wise person knows not to put one in a salad. That's because wisdom is a product of experience. Wisdom comes from connecting the dots. Wisdom comes when we understand how to apply the technologies and data to help improve the quality of life for residents. Take Santander, Spain, a mid-sized city in Europe. City leaders installed a digital infrastructure, 20,000 sensors all around the city to measure air pollution, noise, traffic congestion, availability of parking space. City residents can download an app called the pulse of the city, whereby they can get real-time information, but also, if they opt in, they can turn their smartphone devices into sensing devices. If you think about it now, from a city standpoint, that was an immense leap that the city leaders made. However, the city also realized that just having sensors installed or converting its residents into prosumers, i.e. participating in the data stream by adding information, 
and not just passively receiving information around city services is not going to get them wise. It needed a governance structure. It needed a process to manage all of the data that is coming through so that the various service areas like transportation, like waste and water management can collectively work towards the unified goal. We are in an era of exponential innovation. Simply put, it's innovation fast and furious. For illustration around the pace, consider the following. If I take 30 steps, 30 linear steps, I would cross probably 30 yards, roughly the third of a size of a soccer field. If I take 30 exponential steps, I would probably cross the earth 26 times. So it is about harnessing that rate of change in the world today. As an example, consider Uber or Lyft. With your smartphone devices, which are GPS enabled, and changes in social behavior, because you are now literally getting into an unknown person's car and driving away. You now have options to new mobility um, uh, carriers or transportation, or what is called smart transportation. Similarly, when you use smart technologies wisely, you yield results that are inconceivable even a few years ago. 10 years ago, if somebody would have told me that the Ubers or Lyfts of the world would be considered to be amongst the world's top transportation companies, but they would not own any physical assets. Their value proposition is a technology platform. I would have found that to be inconceivable. But today, it is true. And it's true because we are trying to harness all this innovation by bringing in not just our analytical and methodical thinking, i.e. our left brain, but also our right brain, being more holistic, creating a North Star, connecting the dots from bottoms up and, dot and top down. So what does wise cities, smart cities gone wise, illustrate? There are three key attributes. First, systemic. Both Oklahoma City and Santander took a systemic perspective, a comprehensive system-wide approach to innovating and problem solving to improve the quality of life for its residents. Not the usual siloed approach to departments such as transportation or utilities. But they integrated the solutions to provide a unified goal for all city officials and the residents. The city leaders see themselves also not just as managers of bureaucracies, of departments, but as conveners, as community builders, co-creating and collaborating with the citizens, with the private sector, with academia. Second, when communication lines open up and communities are engaged, Cities become more responsive, become more resilient, and more sustainable in the long term. City of San Francisco, they realized that a centralized approach to earthquake response doesn't work, because when communication lines go down after an impact, each neighborhood reacts and is impacted differently. 
the Neighborhood Empowerment Network strengthens each neighborhood's capability to respond to such disasters by creating local communication plans to bring residents to safe zones when disasters and tragic events do happen. The city leaders are helping the local communities by providing the necessary know-how so that they can marshal the help when needed and also helping to them, them to take ownership. The other key aspect is cybersecurity. When you think about digital, we all think about our data, our privacy. What happens if it falls into hands of bad actors? In a connected digital world, we all know that an impact on one area can have a cascading effect on other areas. And it's important for city leaders to understand how they can leverage and share threat information to be first, account for their assets and be secure. Second, create a monitoring process to be vigilant, thereby leading to be resilient. And third, and this sounds really much easier than it truly is, smart cities gone wise are human-centered. This approach is taken out from a, how the savvy retailers work today. They almost know what we want before, before we do and make it actionable. Smart technologies used wisely help cities today to be more responsive, to be collaborative, to be data-driven. City of Cascais in Portugal, next to Lisbon, claim to fame is a gorgeous coastline, attracts about 1.2 million tourists every year. The citizens actively participate and are engaged with the city. The usual table stakes today, photographing potholes or you know, reporting broken benches. One level up though, they request public works projects. They suggest priorities on how to pay for certain projects versus others. But the city rewards citizens even further. They incentivize participation. Because if, imagine that participation in a budgeting priority process, and if that is not reward enough, they have a tool called City Points Cash Cash, whereby points are awarded, which can be redeemed with local businesses for products and discounts. City of Buenos Aires squarely puts accountability in the hands of the citizens by displaying items of repair through social media channels. Work is not deemed completed unless the citizens declare them so. Again, the results are remarkable. A huge increase in satisfaction index and the time to resolve complaints have reduced by 93% thus allowing the city to do really much more with the same resources or even less. So what is the lesson? Smart cities is not really about shiny objects or technologies or how many data streams we have. It is about how we bring it all together to produce results, to produce value new services. It's a convergence of the built world, of the digital and the human experience. It requires a system of systems thinking. And Columbus, Ohio illustrates this point. 150 babies die in Franklin County on an average before their first birthday. 
and twice as many African-American babies are likely to die. In some neighborhoods, this is because they don't have timely, safe, and reliable transportation access for pregnant women. So they set forth on an ambitious goal, reduce infant mortality by 40% by 2020. And the way they are going about this process is really that system of systems thinking. It's an integration of a scheduling platform whereby women can make appointments with the city's transit schedule so that they can get transportation access in due time to keep those appointments. And cities are now looking at Columbus to learn from that experience. When I studied architecture and information systems at Carnegie Mellon several years ago, I relished the multidisciplinary approach that the university encouraged. I dreamed of creating solutions and programs that impact people's lives. I'm now the father of two daughters. They both love ballet and music. And like all parents, my wife and I look forward to a future that is safe and healthy for them. A future that is responsive to their ideas and talents. A future that is spectacularly good based on the choices that we are going to make today. And my ask of you is this. Ask yourself, what are you doing to invigorate participation in your local community? Ask yourself, what are we learning from cities like Toledo, Oklahoma City, Columbus, Buenos Aires? And ask yourself, what are the behaviors of today that will impact tomorrow? Let's make a difference together. Onward. Thank you.